There's a T-Rex right there in front of you. What do you do? In the crazy hypothetical case that we encounter one, all right, the advice from the paleontologist Alan Grant in the famous Tyrannosaurus Rex scene in Jurassic Park is to stay perfectly still. Why? Because they only see what moves. Too bad that in reality, this would probably only make it easier for you to get eaten. In fact, according to the latest research, the sensory organs of the Tyrannosaurus Rex were all well developed, making it one of the most ferocious and skillful predators of all time. Their vision in particular was incredibly sharp, which helped them inflict very precise and obviously deadly wounds. Some researchers even believe that they were capable of distinguishing objects from as far away as six kilometers. In short, if you ever happen to encounter a Tyrannosaurus Rex, don't hesitate like in the movie. Do one thing and one thing only. Now let's move on to the T-Rex's short little arms. Yes, because although the Tyrannosaurus is undeniably big and scary, it is actually one of the most bullied animals on the web. Jokes aside, the origin of its very small front limbs is still the subject of much debate. Have you ever wondered why they were like that? People have put forward all sorts of hypotheses to explain them. There are those who claim that they atrophied, because compared to the T-Rex's gigantic and powerful head, they served little purpose when hunting. The T-Rex had a really big head. Others, however, see the front limbs as an instrument for holding and tearing prey. Let's just say that there are conflicting hypotheses and that verifying them is certainly very difficult from a purely scientific standpoint. How do we know which hypothesis is correct? To learn more, we'll definitely have to wait for further research. Then there are dinosaurs that have even shorter limbs than the Tyrannosaurus rex. Have you heard of the Carnotaurus? Who is the Carno? The Carnotaurus. It's the T-Rex's cousin. Dinosaurs with feathers. There's one last fun fact about the Tyrannosaurus which actually concerns many dinosaur species. Do you know what some of these giant creatures had in common with birds? Feathers. You may have noticed that until the latest Jurassic Park movie, there were practically none to be seen. But we now know that many dinosaurs had feathers. Why didn't we see feathers in the earlier Jurassic Park movies? Because research had not yet led scientists to that conclusion, they had not yet discovered or understood that they had feathers. One group of dinosaurs that had this feature were theropods, whose members include the Tyrannosaurus and the Velociraptor. The link between dinosaurs and birds is now accepted by the scientific community, and some even hypothesize that the Tyrannosaurus rex was a sort of giant chicken. A giant chicken, that's the craziest thing. As to the function the feathers performed, our ideas are much less clear. Some of these dinosaurs couldn't fly, but it's likely that the feathers served as thermal insulation and for courtship purposes. Another question, when exactly did dinosaurs exist? The movie is called Jurassic Park, a park concerning the Jurassic period, so evidently all the dinosaurs existed predominantly in the Jurassic period. No, that is absolutely not the case. A little background information. The Jurassic is part of a major geological era called the Mesozoic, which includes the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. This gigantic era was almost entirely dominated by dinosaurs and spans from 245 million years ago to 65 million years ago. Most of the species in the movie actually date back to the last period, the Cretaceous, not the Jurassic. During the Cretaceous period, with the fragmentation of Pangaea, the supercontinent we're all familiar with, dinosaur diversity began to increase significantly. In fact, the Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus and Velociraptor, the main characters in the saga, all come from this period, the Cretaceous. So why didn't they call it Cretaceous Park instead of Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park just sounds cooler, right? Having clarified these points, you might be wondering how we actually know all these things about dinosaurs. The study of fossils never stops surprising us. Our knowledge of the prehistoric world is continuously being modified, updated and expanded. Just imagine that about 45 species of dinosaurs are discovered every year. Then, every so often there's an amazing discovery that basically changes everything and makes history in paleontology. In 1996, for example, the very first fossil of a dinosaur with feathers was found in China. We also have some famous, one-of-a-kind Italian cases. For example, in Altamura, Puglia, Thousands of fossilized footprints from at least five different species that lived 85 million years ago were discovered. These helped reconstruct the conditions present in the region at that time. But even more sensational was the discovery of Little Kiro in the Benevento area in 1981. Well, this fossil, listen up now, belonging to the species Scipionix samniticus, was the first dinosaur ever to be found in Italy. 
It was found in a state of preservation that was just incredible. It's small, no longer than 50 centimeters. Unfortunately, it is thought to have died young, as a juvenile, but it is one of the best preserved dinosaurs in the world. In fact, look, it's got internal organs and muscular structures as well. Let's say it was a fundamental specimen for reconstructing what we know today about the biology and physiology of dinosaurs. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed these fun facts about dinosaurs and Jurassic Park. If there's anything you'd like to know more about, let us know in the comments. Oh, one last thing. In the first Jurassic Park, the dinosaurs are brought back to life thanks to a mosquito preserved in amber, which still contains a dinosaur's blood and therefore its DNA. These creatures are then recreated in a lab. It might seem obvious, but we want to make one thing very clear. This scenario is pure science fiction. Maybe, and I said maybe, we've managed to find traces of DNA inside a fossil discovered in China just last year. However, it is still being analyzed and the results are uncertain. Even if the discovery were confirmed with today's techniques, it would be practically impossible to recreate dinosaurs in a laboratory. That said, I'll see you for the next video. Always here on Geopop Everyday Science.